Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's recap of round four of the Women's Grand Swiss. Today, I have some very exciting games for you. The players are providing the entertainment. They know that we are now just a third of the way through the tournament and they need to rack up as many points as they can as soon as possible. As a reminder, the time control is game in 90 minutes for the first 40 moves. And then once they hit move 40, they get an extra 30 minutes for the rest of the game. And from move one, they get 30 second bonus time for each player. Let's start it off, y'all. We have some very exciting games to get to. All right, y'all, first game I'm going to be showing you is between we have Olvia Fatelieva, who is an international master. She is 23-93 currently. And then we have Grandmaster Alexandra Goryachkina, 25-58. She is the top board, actually, or the top seed in this tournament and she's had a relatively slow start she had two draws in the first two rounds and then she won yesterday um and so going into today she's two out of three and then Olvia actually is also two out of three but she had um, a loss a win and then a win yesterday so she is also going into this two out of three both of these players are looking to get that extra point so starting us off we have Fatalieva with the white pieces and Goryashkina with the black pieces we get e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 Bishop to b5, Aurora Lopez, and now knight to f6, and now castles, knight takes e4, and we get a bit of a couple trades, and now we get bishop to f1, knight takes e5, and we have a bit of a trade of the pieces, and now we have d4. Bishop to f6, rookie one going back, rookie eight, both players shuffling pieces, Goryachkina offering a trade of rooks, and she's like, uh, no thank you, knight c3, oh, uh, you were gonna trade, all right, fine, queen takes d1, bishop takes d4, and now bishop to f4, knight to e8, Goryachkina is currently up a pawn, but knight to d5, d6, bishop to g5, f6, f6 feels crazy here, but I, it is necessary, and now Bishop h4, scooting back, and g5. She says, I don't care. I'm going to be pushing my pawns on the king side. What are you going to do about it? She says, all right, fine. Queen e4, take my bishop. I'll take yours. But bishop takes b2, and she wins a pawn and is attacking the rook at the same time. She slides her rook over, and now she blocks. And she's like, okay, what are you going to do now? f4, I'm going to attack your bishop. You can take mine. That's fine. I'm going to take yours. D takes E5, bishop to D3, developing her piece. But look at the board. We have one, two, three, four versus seven pawns. So Goryachkina is just up three pawns, clear three pawns. However, of course, the computer's like, mm, draw. This is a draw. It's fine. But okay, so we get um, aiming this way. We get king to F8, knight to E3, a little bit of a reroute going on. Queen to e7, queen takes h4, finally winning back one pawn, f5, f5. She said, hey, everything is locked down. I'm also offering a queen trade if you like. And Fatalieva is like, uh, no, you're up two pawns. I'm definitely not queen trading. Queen to f2, knight d6, knight to d5, attacking the queen. The queen moves over to g7, queen to h4, bishop e6, and now she plays she had 50 minutes on the clock and she took 14 minutes to play knight takes c7 and it's a completely losing move because what happens after queen takes c7 i just won your your knight queen to h6 check king to e7 and how are you going to regain my piece rook takes e5 both of you aiming here that's fine queen b6 check King to f1, you cannot go the other way. You will get mated on b1. Knight to f7. And now the knight is the king's best friend. And it is going to squeeze around the position, protect everything, and say, you are not getting into my position. She plays the only move in queen to g7 because the knight cannot move. Can't take. It's pinned. And so queen to d6. Rook to e2. Queen f4 check. King e1. And... Fatalieva is never going to regain her piece. Goryachkina is just up a full knight and she is able to convert it with a few more trades we see on the board. And eventually there's just no way that she's able to regain her piece. And Goryachkina pulls off a win in this game. She is able to convert and eventually Fatalieva resigned. And the black king was just super safe and there was nothing that Fatalieva could do. 
And that was it. She was able to score the point and she goes now two out of three. And I'm sure she's very happy because I think now that would be close to second place, tied for second place. And it's only round four. So she has time to keep racking up a little bit more wins and hopefully rise to the top. I believe she is already qualified for the candidates. So she doesn't need that spot, um, but she wants the money, you know, and it's always nice to do well in a tournament. So I get it. Um, moving on to our next game. We have the top board y'all okay so both of these players are currently three out of three they are the only two players who are three out of three both of them want that win if they win they are in clear first so both of these players are fighting for a win we have grandmaster anna mozichuk who is currently 25 10 versus tan Yi, also grandmaster who is 25 17 both of these players have played each other a ton in the past and we shall see who gets that win. All right, so E4, C5. Tan Yi is going for the fight today, the Sicilian. Knight to F3, D6, Bishop B5 check. Knight to D7, castles, A6, Bishop backs up to D3. Knight to G, uh, Knight G, F6, C3, B5. Ooh, look at this. There is a fight on the board. A4, C4, and now the bishop goes back to E2. And the bishop has moved now three times in the opening which is kind of wild. <laughs> and so we get bishop to b7, attacking this pawn, now that the um, nobody's defending it, the bishop had to move. And now a takes b5, a takes b5, and now rook takes and bishop takes. And you can see um, the bishop coming to b7 was there for when the rook trades to be able to stay on that long diagonal. And so now we get knight to a3, attacking the b5 pawn, queen to b8, defending, and now d3, blowing up the center saying I if I'm able to win some of your pawns or if I'm able to get a pass pawn on the queen side I'm gonna be pretty happy about it c takes d3 bishop takes d3 and now bishop takes e4 and now we get bishop takes b5 and the pin on the e7 knight is rough y'all how is she going to get her pieces out because she needs three moves to be able to castle she has to move a pawn she has to move her bishop and then she can castle so that's three moves which is very difficult to be able to get in especially because all of white's pieces are coming into the party rookie one is coming to attack the bishop here if she plays e6 now after rookie one attacking the bishop if she tries to play bishop to e7 to develop and castle Sorry, I'm going to take and you're forced to take with the king because the knight has a job and it's defending that bishop. So after king takes d7, we would get rook takes e4 anyway. And when the knight takes queen to a4 and white would be completely winning. So e6 doesn't work. What is she going to do? She plays e5 instead. And the idea is kind of very similar. So rook e1, queen to b7 to defend the bishop. And now also to defend against this. And now bishop g5 a very logical move and now bishop takes f3 and here she needs to play g takes f3 because it's just much better to take with this pawn because and keep the queens on the board do not have a queen exchange because the king is in the center it's always going to be better to not have a queen exchange when um the king is in the center white's king is safe she's fine so we don't see that though we see her take with the queen and now after queen takes f3, g takes f3, she still has an advantage, but she doesn't have the queens on the board. And so the black king is no longer probably going to get checkmated within the next couple of moves. Um, instead, now we see king to e7 and f4, h6, we get a trade and knight to c4. Now after d5, knight to e3, moving back, knight to b6, rook a1, trying to slide the rook around to come in, d4, c takes e takes and knight to f5 check and look at these ugly pawns like oh god those are just like the ugliest pawns i've ever seen we get king to e6 attacking the knight bishop defends bishop to d6 attacking the pawn rook check king to d5 bishop check king to e6 bishop moves back she's like are are you offering a repetition are you offering a repetition no no repetition. <laughs> Fooled you, though. I got some time on my clock. Uh, king to d7. Bishop to f5 check. King to d8. Rook d1. And now bishop to b8. And she has... Anna has six moves to make in under a minute to be able to hit move 40. White's pieces are just better coordinated. So much better. 
And so that is why that she has a very, very strong advantage. This is still a little bit difficult um, to try and win, but she has chances. So B4, and now king to C7, rook C1 check, king to D6, bishop to E4, rook C8, offering a trade, no trade, knight to C6, F5, attacking the bishop, rook check, king moves over, bishop backs up, Rook g8 check, king slides over, rook e8, and now knight to d4. And she's like, hey, I'm going to come in and get these pawns. She also could have gone this way and tried to win pawns this way, but she decides to go for knight to d4 instead. King to c8, she wins the f5 pawn. Rook to e6, and now rook c1 check, king to d7. And the both players, by the way, have hit time control. This is move 44, go or this going into move 44. And so she has some time. We get rook d1 check, king to c8, knight to e3, and now rook to d6. Offering a trade of rooks. She says no. She goes over. b5, rook to f6, f5. And this is a little, little crazy. So th they were both attacking this pawn. So somebody had to do something. Um, an idea was maybe to go rook d1 and after rook d6, rook a1, and then after rook d4, rook a6. But she decides to play like this and play f5, which honestly, it's very difficult to see how to make progress here. After bishop takes h2, knight g4, forking both pieces, she just moves back. And now the, the pretty move here is that she's attacking both. So, you know, it would just be a trade. <laughs> but should we get a check? And then luckily the rook can come back to block. And now rook takes, bishop takes, and now knight takes h6, king to e7, bishop to h5, king to f6, knight takes, bishop c7. And now it's not really clear how you're supposed to make progress. How are you going to push your pawn, either your b pawn, you have doubled f pawns, and your pieces are like, uh, what are we supposed to do? Probably bring the king off the board? Knight c4, knight h6, knight d6, f4, knight takes b5, winning the pawn. Now it's just the two f pawns. Knight g4 check, king to g7, bishop e8, knight d6. The players shuffle a little bit more. And now there's an offer of a trade. And now we get trades. And there is no way of saving that pawn. And the game was declared a draw. So Anna Muzichuk blundered her advantage and she was definitely the favorite to win this, especially after kind of an opening disaster for Tan Jong Yi. And the game ended in a draw. I'm sure that Tan Jong Yi is very happy that this ended in a draw because she was on the ropes for the beginning portion of this game and she was able to save a draw. So both players now are three and a half out of four and they stay tied for first. And now on to our last game. I did save the best for last. This is an amazing game. All right, y'all. I really did save the best for last. All right. So we have with the white pieces, Grandmaster Maria Muzichuk, who is 25-19. And we have with the black pieces, International Master Vaishali Ramesh Babu, who is 24-48. Both of these players are amazing. Vaishali had what was the game of her life yesterday she is on fire she is itching to get to 2500 she just scored her third gm norm a couple weeks ago if not maybe a week ago and so she is looking to get to 2500 and get those rating points and finally get the gm title so let's jump into the game maria is a former women's world champion she is playing with white we get e4 c5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop to b5 this is a rosalimo sicilian Bishop takes, B takes, castles, Bishop G7, Rook E1, Queen C7, and now C3. Aiming to play D4, D6, H3, Knight to F6, and finally D4. We're trying to break open the center, C takes, C takes, and now castles. Knight to C3, C5, E5, D takes, D takes, and Rook D8. Attacking the queen. Queen slides over to a4, knight to h5, and this is the position which looks kind of a little bit crazy because look at this knight. You're like, hmm, isn't that knight trapped? Doesn't that knight just not have any squares to go to? If here you play g4 saying, I'm going to win your knight, 
bishop to b7. Yeah. I'm looking at your knight. And if you play knight to e4 to block, f5 comes. And the light squared bishop turns into an absolute monster. So if you think you can win <laughs> that knight, it gets actually incredibly tricky. And so she does not play g4. She instead plays here queen to h4. And after queen to h4, guess what's still coming? Bishop b7. And after e6, the idea is f5. And those bishops are killers. Look, the, this is insane. The black bishops are just completely dominating the board. The queen is honestly probably a little bit embarrassed over here because she doesn't have many squares to go to. We get bishop to g5, and now bishop takes f3. G takes f3, and queen to b7. Just basically replacing that bishop, aiming this way. And if you think you have the idea, which was here, basically, she's threatening to play rook to d4. Say right now she tries to play rook to d4. After rook to d4, it actually does not work because of the pretty knight to b5 counterattack. And if you take, I take. And then now, guess what? We are both aiming and white would just be completely winning here. And so that wouldn't work. Rook to d4 wor doesn't work yet, which is why she plays queen to b7 instead to be able to not let the knight come here. And now after knight to e2, she plays queen takes f3. Bishop takes e7, attacking the rook. And rook to d2. Such a pretty move. How are you going to save that piece? Bishop takes c5. And rook takes e2, queen to c4, and knight to g3. Threatening mate, where are you going to go? How are you going to get out of this? If you take, I'm going to mate you. You're not allowed to take. <laughs> I'm just going to mate you. And how are you going to get out of this? So after e7 check with the discovered, after king to h8, she resigned. Maria Mirzichuk resigned, and Vaishali wins the point and wins the game in 23 moves against a former world champion. Vaishali is on fire, y'all. Like, oh my god, she is killing it. She's having an amazing tournament. I literally got goosebumps. She is like, I am getting those rating points. I am hitting 2,500. No one is going to stop me. I'm going to get my GM title. Thank you very much. She just beat Maria in 23 moves with black. Like, don't, you can't give her a second. This was so nice. Honestly, I think the idea here was after she had played going all the way back to um, having the knight on the rim over there, I think that honestly, it was just, it's a bit confusing of how are you going to win that knight? And for playing as white, you're thinking, I should be able to win that knight. And it must be so frustrating to not be able to win that knight because it's actually just a really nice move from Vaishali. It's, it, the knight is safe. There's no way that you can win it. And she freaking wins the game. And she goes three and a half out of four. And she is tied for first place. What the hell? All right. So after all the dust settled after round four, we have a four-way tie for first. We have Tanjan Yi, Anna Muzichuk, Vaishali Ramesh Babu, uh, Bibisara Asubayava. All four of these players putting up a fight. As you can see in the games below, we had um, uh, Bibisara beat Elizabeth Pites. We had, um, let's see, who else won here? Oh, this game was insane. Oh my god, she made it with a knight and a bishop which you don't see every day. She had very nice technique and she won that game. And honestly, she deserves that because that is very hard. Here are the rest of the results. Elena Rovers lost to Tierora Inyats. It was a very close game, um, but Inyats came out with the win. We had a lot of decisive results today. Um, Alexandra Kostanyuk losing to Gerefolina. Um, very, very many um, decisive results. Uh, a bit of, you know, a couple draws as well. Um, but all of these players are fighting. Um, pause if you want to see any of the players that you're rooting for and what their results were. I can't even go on the FIDE website to see the standings because they're not even updated yet because I am literally recording this right after <laughs> the game's finished. These are the standings. We have a four-way tie for first. We have a ton of people with three out of four, two and a half out of four. Um, yeah, a ton of people trying to get those spots. 
Um, a lot of people with two out of four, one and a half, and then going down as well. So that was the games for today, y'all. I hope you enjoyed. We had some very nice games. And honestly, we will see what happens tomorrow. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. There will be no new video tomorrow. I am celebrating my anniversary. So I will not be making a recap, but you guys can see them online. And I'll be back to discuss what happened on Monday for round six. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.